Hello, you goobers. Mark with Cardvox Academy here. Thank you for your patience with the delay in the video. Uh, for anyone who's curious why a video didn't go up yesterday, um, I was just waiting on a repair guy. Um, and I knew that once I started recording, he'd show up, my dog would bark, like I told everybody else in the group. But anyways, we're at it today. Um, the vote for this week is fit for an, fit for an autopsy, uh, The Sea of Tragic Beasts. I'm actually really excited about this song because I used to listen to a lot of Fit for an Autopsy back in the day, but they had a different vocalist. Now they've got a guy, John Badolato, is I think how do you pronounce his last name? I haven't I haven't really heard this. Um, I'm familiar with their old vocalist. I've heard that this guy does mostly fry, but then um, I spoke with someone who toured with him um, and he said it was mostly false chords. So we're going to listen and we're going to see what we can figure out. Before we get started, uh, don't worry. <laughs> I just have a quick question for you folks. Um, I've had some requests about me breaking down some of my own music. Up until this point, I've felt a little weird about that, um, talking about Kardashev or Viremia on this channel. Um, but if it's something that enough people wanna see, I'll happily do it. So if you'd like me to see me break down like Glioblastoma from Viremia or a Kardashev song, I'll happily do it. It wouldn't replace our weekly video, but if it's something you wanna see and if there's enough, uh, if there's enough interest, I'll do it. Just kind of, kind of feels weird talking about myself too much and on that note let's get into this song um sea of tragic beasts fit for an autopsy let's do it let's scooch to the front here blip here we go I love those scrapes. I love those scrapes. This is how you know something's happening. Okay. Okay, sick, sick. So, um, I mean, th this is the most I've heard of this guy so far, uh, but so far I really like his tone. Um, it's actually interesting. Um, <laughs> last video I was like, ooh, with black tongue. I was like, oh, you don't really hear like this roaring tone very much. And I really like the roaring tone. And now we're hearing it in, in Fit for an Autopsy. So maybe it's a little bit more common than I think. I, I still don't feel like I hear it a lot. Um, but as far as whether or not this is fry or false chord, one reason that a lot of people will hear a vocal a vocalization, a metal vocal, and think it's it's a, a vocal fry is because the distortion sounds very tight, very tight and uh, and um, sharp. Whereas like false chord, which is kind of what I specialize in, it has a little bit of a slower like rattle to it, <clears throat> right? It's got like that slower rattle. However, to a degree with false chord vocals, we can manipulate and we can control the tightness of that um, of that distortion. Um, partially with, with how engaged our soft palate is, if it's like floppy or if it's a little tighter, you can to a degree uh, uh, control that. That might be what's going on here. Um, I can see it being fry, um, but you know, you can also make a lot of sounds like this with false chord as well. Um, another thing I like is how he's, he's while his mouth is open, dropping the tone down. So he's got that roaring posture, but he drops the tone downward. Let's listen to it again. I'm gonna use a little shortcut key. Somebody in my last uh, video told me I'm gonna use the old back button to go back 10 seconds. It's gonna make my life a lot easier. I went, I went back a little too far, but like this riff is dope, so I don't even care. I want you to focus on the sound that he's making, and I want you to think about big open mouth, tongue up and slightly pulled back, and our resonance, we're kind of imagining our resonance uh, happening, of course, always in the front, but also we're using the, the back of our throat, the oropharynx, right? So a lot of ah, ah, ah. So 
Sorry I went back so far, guys. So, he's really easy to understand. I don't have it perfect, but it sounded like he said uh, the smell of savagery or the something of savagery. And notice on the word savagery. <laughs> savagery. <laughs> See, by closing, we talk about the lips all the time, and that's because they're so important. So he's got that roaring tone. All I'm really doing is manipulating my lips. A little bit with the back of the tongue, but he's using that to kind of resolve his phrases, and I think it sounds cool. That was awesome. Hi. High and then low. How did you do it? There we go. Yeah, that was really cool. Let's hear that one more time. Sick. You know, another thing that if, if like you want to have a lot of this roaring tone, uh, like this roaring scream, you know, because you've got like your typical highs, yes, I me, right? You've got your lows. <clears throat> but if you want more of like that mid roar, <laughs> a lot of times what's difficult for people is they lose the they lose the placement, right? Um, uh, well, there are a couple reasons that that can happen, but go ahead if if you can if you can do the false chord sound, go ahead and kind of make your normal sound and then open your mouth up a bit more. <laughs> Doesn't sound that great, but when I open <laughs> and I add some diaphragm, some breath support, right? Then we get that more roaring tone. <laughs> Inescapable agony. Right, so think about that. Over, almost over pronouncing our words is gonna help us keep that wide open space where all that resonance can happen. And as always, a raised soft palate doesn't hurt. Oh! That's a high note. Okay, I had no idea that Fit for an Autopsy was singing. I had no idea. So this is like a really cool surprise. That that note he's what what note is that he's hitting? Because that's that's a fairly high note. Okay. What? Is that a C? All right. We're gonna do our first hard cut because I gotta hook up my keyboard here. Bear with me. Okay. So we got the keyboard set up. Beautiful. Let's go back and let's let's figure out what note that is because that's that's a high note. It's not like crazy, but it's 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 worth talking about. Is that a, this, um, C5? I think that's right. Let's go back. Yeah, uh, so F, A sharp, C. Ways, ways. All right, so let's listen through and then we're gonna talk about high notes. We're gonna talk high notes and singing because <laughs> that's what they're doing. Um, I didn't expect to talk about singing today, but that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, so that's a C5. 
um, that's that's a somewhat tougher note uh, for for guys. It's a little high for me. Um, one thing, so we've got a couple vocal tracks going on here. We've got what sounds to me just like a like a normal like harsh track, and then it almost sounds like we maybe have a clean track on top of it with just like a little bit of grit added. Let's keep it clean for the purposes. Let's keep it clean, folks. Let's keep it clean for the purposes of this, just so we can kind of focus on um, um, pitch and tone all as one. So. A lot of times when a lot of the time when people say a, a note is, that's high is really difficult, what they're running into is a lot less the pitch and a lot more the the placement of the resonance. OK, so, for example, I'm going to pull the earphone off so I can hear myself better. Um, this note, this note's a little high for me. Now, the way that I manage that is I have my soft palate up. And I have my resonance nice and high. In fact, so um, the highest note that I can generally do, um, and I have to really warm up into this for it to sound good, would be an F5. Right? So when we go for those high notes, we can place the resonance in our head in a different spot to find it more manageable. So for me, like a high ah ah ah, almost like I have a like a like I'm at the the doctor and I've got a tongue depressor ah ah, that makes it easy. Or even an e e. So um, for example, let's do let's do this. And I'm gonna kind of move the resonance around in my head, and you can you can hear a difference. You hear how the pitch didn't change, but the resonance placement did. Um, if high notes are difficult for you, you can try to have more of a more of a bright head voice resonance. Uh, the trick is going to be don't make it breathy. Don't go because you're going to strain, you're going to you're going to struggle, you're going to pull. Um, so I would be willing to bet that this guy, because it sounds like he's doing this pretty easily, I'd be willing to bet that this guy could probably probably even go higher than I can. Because for me, it's that F five. But he's he's hitting this easily. Let's keep going though. Let's keep going though. This is really cool. Well, a pleasant surprise. I love how they went back into like just the heavy part right after that cool like sort of like rocky singing. That was so sick. And I love how he lets his his uh, screams sort of naturally come like he, he has a lot of control essentially over the volume of his screams. <laughs> he does it sort of naturally. He I would love to like meet this guy or to see him play live because he controls so much of what he's doing with the front of his mouth. And that's so smart. It's so smart to do that because then you're taking so much work off of back here. A lot of people who come to me and they're like, oh, I've got so much strain, I've got so much pain. It's because they're trying to do stuff back here that they could be doing up in the front. Oh, something's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen. So I'm sure it's from those notes, it sounds like we're going back into the singing. But what I want you to think about while you're listening to him, and if you can do the false chord sound on your own, what I want you to think about playing with is holding a, a comfortable tone. That's my comfort zone right there as far as just like a bass, just not, well, not bass as in bass register, but just like a starting point. 
and playing around with the front of your mouth to see how much you can do. In some of my other videos, I've talked about how to get really low with my gutturals. A lot of the times, rather than manipulating anything in my throat, I'll just pull my cheeks open. That sounds weird. <laughs> Anyways, as an example, right? So with these like roaring like mids, almost no work back here. This is like, if you can do this, you can really take a lot of control over your, your metal screams, highs, lows, or mids, and make them really unique. A lot of people, I think, just get focused back here because that's where we imagine everything being created. Do you hear how he dropped sanity? I mean, it's subtle, but I love it. Yeah. I don't know what words he set up to that, but I love it. Okay, we're gonna listen to him say me. It sounds like he's saying fall in the fire with me. This guy's pretty easy to understand. Um, but I want you to think about bringing the mouth in around it, slowly easing off the breath support. And it, I, I mean, I'm sure I went through and, and in post, they like cleaned up, cleaned it up. But um, a lot of this, he just did on his own. And it's a really cool thing. Um, a, lot of, a lot of metal vocals focus on being aggressive all the time right? And there's nothing wrong with that because it sounds cool. But learning how to get gentle with your metal vocals, you know, take it down a notch and it can bring some nuance. It's really cool. Like, so for example, we'll, we'll listen to this, but for example, like, um, with, with a high, right? Uh, you can, yeah, like that's really tight. That's really thin. That's really gurgly. But if you pull it back a little bit and soften it, you can do really cool stuff like he's doing here. Yeah. See how I sort of like eased off on the distortion and let it fade out? Play around, play around with your, me uh, with your metal vocals. That was really cool too. We're gonna go back and listen to to that. So one thing that I hear a lot um, in in uh, about false chords is that you can't hold them out very long. And while it's true that fry screams are probably gonna be easier, well they are gonna be easier to to maintain your airflow, um, you know, and hold out longer screams. You can certainly do it with with uh, false chord. You can certainly do it. Also the video, I love like the shadows. It's kind of a simple look, but I, I really am enjoying it. Um, it's kind of dark frame, but whatever. I mean, I know he's probably lip syncing there because that's kind of what we do in music videos because you're not going to take audio in that spot. You're going to take your mixed and mastered audio. But you can see like the nice wide open mouth there. That's kind of, you know, that could be some of that over articulation you're talking about. Because like if I do a mid um, and I don't over articulate it, it's going to sound really lazy. Uh, it's going to it's going to sound like the people are going to be like that vocalist doesn't even want to be doing vocals. So uh, the Sea of Tragic Beasts.
No, the sea of tragic beasts. The sea of tragic beasts. Oh man, I'm in the studio and I don't want to be in a super cool band. I'd rather be home playing Fortnite. What? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But now all I'm really going to do is I'm just going to open my mouth more. It's going to sound more interesting. So again, lazy. The sea of tragic beasts. The sea of tragic beasts. The sea of tragic beasts. Rawr. Just adds a little bit more emotion into it, right? Nobody likes a lazy vocalist. <sighs> you know, just sitting at the merch table while everybody's unloading the drum set. Let's keep going. Oh, that was it. Okay, cool. Well, um, new, well, new fit for an autopsy to me, it's new to me, it was really cool. Um, I love the vocalist. Uh, I, I honestly really like that he kind of sat in the pocket of those mids pretty much the whole time. You don't have to constantly be going as low as possible and as high as possible to be a good vocalist, right? I mean, we heard from him that in that mid tone, he was able to add tons of nuance, uh, leaning out of it, leaning into it, bringing it down, using the shape of his mouth. Um, that's gonna be your main takeaway. Also, he can hit some high notes, which are really cool. One thing I forgot to mention about singing high notes um, that can really help is stop thinking of, I think I've mentioned this in another video, but we're gonna talk about it here. Stop thinking of your high notes as being high notes and your low notes is being low notes think of everything existing right in front of you so you can reach out and you can grab the next pitch you need <laughs> right um a lot of the time when people are like struggling to reach for a high note like that sound right it's because they have this idea that the high is something that they have to reach forward. They have to reach up and grab. Um, but really, I mean, everything's happening here. And if you, you can do so much with a, with your larynx neutral, your, lar your larynx doesn't have to reach up. It doesn't have to grab. Right? Up, down, keep it, keep it level. Keep it in front of you. Um, but yeah, pitch, pitch and all that is its own video. So I'm going to stop there. But as always, it's time for our Cardivox Academy community feature. All right, so we're back. Um, and I don't know why it is so hot in this room. So I apologize for my appearance. But today, uh, we're gonna give a shout out to our good guy, Rick, here. Um, so if you're watching this channel, you probably know who Ben Dur is. And if you know who that is, you know who Shout Out Intent is. Uh, there's a specific section in the song, Heretic Prevails, where he does some crazy vocals. Um, Rick takes a shot and he does super well. Uh, it's about a minute long. We're going to listen to the whole thing. Um, and then I'll give some feedback, but I was scrolling through the community. I saw this video. I was impressed by it. I think you are super on the right track. So let's do it. All right. I'm going to record one more video tonight and that's uh, kind of a reenactment of this uh, crazy video of Ben Dur, um, during this really tension-filled part of the heretic prevails i feel you um i feel you <clears throat> so i'm just gonna do that live real quick just to demonstrate um the versatility of the slam technique <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to be real. People have said this about me, right? Um, and I'm going to say it too. I did not expect those, those lows. Um, and, you know, it's always kind of fun when, you know, you don't look like a metal guy, but then you can bust out lows. Like you hit some lows there that were absolutely insane, um, especially near the end. Couple pieces of, I really don't have any feedback on your lows. I, th I thought they were great. The resonance sounded nice and forward. Um, it sounded like the 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 distortion was placed properly. I, I I don't have any concern with those. Couple things I do want to talk about though, just a little bit of positive or a little bit of feedback. Um, there's a habit that a lot of people have that I had to break myself of doing this <clears throat> before you do vocals. Try to omit that from your life. Um, reason is is because when we go 
our vocal folds are just smack, 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 smacking together, right? Um, and it's just unnecessary work, essentially like that. You can kind of replace, because a lot of people, it's like an impulse. They need to go, they need to make a sound before they make a sound, essentially. You can replace it with, it's kind of what I did, or basically replace it with something that's going to take the work off your vocal folds. Even though with false chords, we're not using our true chords, we still don't need to be slamming them around. Um, another thing is the high, like the tunnel high that he does, sounded great. I would say if you can, um, start with more of a mid and push, oh, thanks. <laughs> start with more of a mid and push the high up into the, into the soft palate. So, <clears throat> So we have that mid, and you see how I opened my mouth? I started with my mouth uh, small, and then I opened it and stretched it. Like that. Give that a try. I think that'll give you some more some more distance, right? A little bit more, uh, uh, a little bit more range on that, uh, that high. But other than that, great job. I loved it. I was very impressed. Um, you're doing awesome. Keep it up. I love your vocals, and that's what we got. All right, so we can close this out. Ha-ha! <laughs> That's my background, folks. I'm a little si excited about the remake. I can't help it. But anyways, that's the video today. Thanks so much for uh, checking it out. I appreciate it. I had fun with Fits for an Autopsy. Um, if, if you do want me to go over one of my own songs on the channel, just let me know. Um, you know, I'll, I'll happily do it if there's enough interest, but I also don't want to seem like I'm, I don't know, I don't know, tooting my own horn or whatever, because there are a lot of vocalists that are better than me. But point is, Thank you so much for watching. If you want to vote on the videos, if you want to get some feedback on your vocals, you know, potentially get featured on the channel, join the Cardivox Academy Facebook community page. It's free. It's fun. It's fresh. It's hip. It's funky. It's cool. <sighs> Anyways, I'm going to stop talking now because I'm uh, feeling a little goofy and I think I need to go, uh, I don't know, get ready for my next lesson because uh, we're going to start some singing. Anyways, many thanks. Much love.